On the bench today is a Toshiba Walkie. This is the KTRS one. This came to me in pretty poor condition. Um, some bits and pieces uh, for the tape drive rattling around, and it's actually missing um, the, that for one side. So I don't have great expectations for this. However, uh, one good thing about it is um, I've uh, loaded the radio module into it and it does seem to play back okay, although mostly only from one channel. So not completely clear what the problem there is. Uh, I don't hear any sound and there doesn't seem to be anything happening if I try and play like a, a tape or anything like that. So could be a bit of work. It might be a piece of junk. I'm not entirely sure at this point. Uh, having the missing parts is not ideal. I'm not sure, you know, there's no chance really of getting spare parts for that unless I can print them or, you know, make a, a two from one, which is coincidentally why I did actually buy this. I do actually already have one here, um, you know, one I prepared earlier. Uh, I've had some issues with this, trying to get it working correctly. Uh, when I have this main issue is when I have this uh, inductor actually connected where this inductor is supposed to go, I actually lose uh, sound on one channel. Uh, when I remove it, it seems to work on both sides, but I've never actually got it to all work properly now. So I don't know whether, um, you know, if, if this is solving the problem, making a problem worse, or it's telling me something else. So maybe between these two, I'm actually going to end up getting a, a work, working walkie. Um, and you might notice that on this one here, I've actually already uh, started replacing some capacitors, um, both as a, a, a technical exercise, because it is actually quite difficult on these, these boards, because they are incredibly small. Um, and also maybe it's it actually has something to do with, with some of the problems. Um, it's an odd design that I actually can't quite figure out exactly what does what. Uh, some of these components, one of them, uh, I'm not sure which one it is, maybe this one here is listed as um, like a headphone amplifier chip. Um, and you see actually almost a replication of some of the circuitry, like the capacitors and, and everything and is, is basically the, the same, it's almost a mirror. And there's another chip and I'm not exactly sure what that's for. I suspect it's maybe for recording or some other uh, system. But some of these chips, um, they're labelled with JRC, which is a Japan Radio Corporation. They're not easy to find uh, te text sheets on them. Um, perhaps not actually sold outside of Japan. I don't exactly know. Or maybe they're made specifically for a company for a product. So th that I'm not sure about. Um, my searches are obviously not really turned up anything very interesting. Now, one of the other problems with this one that I've already started working on is uh, some of these small components, these SMD components, and you probably maybe can just, just, just see it there. Um, there's been a bit of a flake off. Um, so I actually can't even tell what that component is anymore. Um, and it's was actually close to something that I was desoldering and maybe it's I've damaged the solder or something and I was actually planning that maybe I'd just replace that but now I can't because I don't know what was written on it. Um, I've got some old photos, I mean I, I did take photos of this when I started but it was actually very difficult to, to make out what it is. Um, I have a new idea that I'm going to try when I open this one up what I might do is actually stick it on a flatbed scanner and scan it on high res, see if that makes um, a difference to, you know, getting a nice image out that I can actually work with. Uh, I also want to know, I mean, I have taken many, many, many photos of this before I did it. These are all hooked up um, in various places. So I just want to confirm that I've actually got these in the right spot. Now, one of the things I am worried about with this one is the fact that it was broken. It may, um, well, broken, loose parts, whatever. Someone may have actually been in there already and they might have hacked it. So I don't know. So that's going to be the next thing to do is going to open that up and have a look inside. 
Um, it is one of the disadvantages of this style. I mean, they're very, very um, compact, um, not as compact as some of the later models, um, like from the Sonys and Panasonic and things like that, where they're almost not much bigger than the tape itself. But uh, these ones uh, are quite compact, and one of the tricks is, is that if you want to change the belts, you actually can't do it without desoldering these wires. Um, you won't get in there. So that's one of the issues with them. It's, you know, there might have been a better solution, I don't know, but, you know, those belts probably last anywhere between five and ten years, which is probably, in the designer's idea, is probably a fairly significant lifetime or, you know, enough. Okay, back with my newer walkie now. And just a few notes on, on undoing these and getting into them. You do need to take these side screws out. You don't need to bother with these hinge screws. In fact, I would mostly leave those in. Uh, and there's two screws here. So really, maybe just four screws will get you into there. However, I did find that it's much easier when you take these four out and these four retain the uh, retaining mechanism here. So. You do need to be careful undoing this because there's a spring in here and that can fly off and is very small, maybe like two grains of rice put together end to end. Um, if it's gone, it's gone and I don't like your chances of getting another one the same. Um, also in here while you're there, you can see that there's no, you know, those black plastic uh, drive capstans or whatever they're called. Um, they're not there. Yeah. I've got, I've got one and some springs and stuff, but I don't have the other one. The head on this one too, I don't know if you can see there, it was actually pretty cruddy. Um, I've given it a clean as much as I can and it's still not good. So mm, I don't know if I like this one as, as a unit that I would put tapes that I cared about on. Probably can polish it. And in fact, that's something I might um, have a go at because I, I think this one is in some ways parts of it are a lost cause anyway um, so you know we can take a chance on on a few things and not really care as long as if I can get you know enough of this into this or use enough of the information I get from opening this and have a look in it to get this one over here fixed and working I'll be actually quite happy anyway uh, this was probably about half the price of the other one and I certainly wasn't going to pay any more because I knew that basically these are very, very difficult to get into, get them in there and repair them. And there's a lot of things that can go wrong. So for a non-functioning one where people are listing it as junk, I'm not going to pay you a lot of money for one of these. And I would suggest that no one does. Um, you know, it needs to be in basically working condition or listed it as in very good condition and I want to be able to see everything working I want them to say that you know they can hear the motor working and all that sort of stuff works um, without that you know you're just wasting your money I think um, taking too or you're taking too big a risk anyway so um, that's about all that uh, I can tell you about this right now the next thing to do would be I think just to start undoing it we'll uh, get a screwdriver out and see what's inside Okay, let's see if we can get inside this without too much drama, without too much swearing, without me hitting this tripod too many times. I think from the feel of these screws, um, I'm already quite confident someone has been in here. They're not tight, they're not, you know, they don't have that sort of stiction and binding that you normally get. Um, sometimes they can actually be very, very difficult to get them out, even though mostly they, they go into plastic.
Okay, so don't know if it's completely obvious in this shot here, but you can see this retention mechanism here actually fouls against the inside um, panel there. So I do think, you know, always a good idea just to remove this. Um, maybe get it out, I don't know. I just found it easier. And where possible, keep your screws sort of separate so that you know exactly where they belong. Because once you get maybe 15 of these things and if they get mixed up, it becomes very, very hard to match them exactly where they're meant to go. Some of these, it's not a problem. Others, they, uh, they have the same thread, the same diameter, but the length is just be slightly different and then something doesn't work the way it's supposed to. And if you can avoid it, you don't want to foul, because like I said, these things often have very small tolerances. Now, in here somewhere, let's have a look. Okay, so, in there, there's that little spring that I was uh, talking about. And I don't think I was exaggerating saying that that's uh, only about like two grains of rice. It's quite small. So, yeah, and I almost lost it. So, there you go. There's a lesson for everybody. Right, so now. other part of the bracket there. Just got to be gentle. 